I've never done a response video, but this cult leader McKellen, uh, this guy, seems to be his forte. Um, he made a response video to my last video, uh, sun worshiping. So let's get started. All right, let's see it. The point is that it's all connected to astronomy. Or at least that's the dogma that's going to be promoted. Also, watch out for Google search. It seems like a lot of religious, especially the pseudo-Christian blogs and forums have bought a lot of space in the top searches when you look up these type of things, trying to debunk it. They are obviously very scared of this information, so I suggest using chat GPT, Brave Search Engine, or just academic journals if you have access to that. So I've talked recently about issues with how people research, particularly on Google, and here this creator is just sharing the results of a basic Google search for Egyptian mythology, refers to two uh, undergraduate level textbooks. The third uh, hit on there is actually just an earlier edition of the first hit, and these are not academic journals, these are just undergraduate level textbooks. But let's take a look in those textbooks and see if the entries on Horus actually support the claims from this creator's previous video. You're going to have to pause to read. He works for the Mormons, which is absolutely bonkers if you just look into it for a minute. Uh, I suggest watching the South Park video, pretty classic, pretty hilarious, gives you a run through of all the batshit stuff they stand for and believe in. I am 100% in agreement that that is a classic and a hilarious episode of South Park. So yeah, this guy you could say is biased a little bit, maybe, hmm? Uh, his whole stick is comforting Christians and debunking anti-Christian rhetoric to uphold this one religion out of 10K so you, they can sleep at night. On the contrary, the overwhelming majority of the content on my channel directly criticizes Christian dogmas, including Latter-day Saint dogmas. And on the off chance I say something on my channel that happens to overlap with Latter-day Saint dogmas, that's just because the academic consensus happens to overlap. As with, for instance, the academic consensus that creation ex nihilo is not found in the Bible, or the academic consensus that God was conceptualized as anthropomorphic and corporeal until late antiquity. He also claims to have a PhD in theology and religion. That's like having a PhD in Lord of the Rings lore. So theology and religion is just the name of the department at the University of Exeter that awarded my degree. My doctoral dissertation was on cognitive linguistics and the cognitive science of religion and what those cognitive approaches can tell us about how the authors and editors of the Hebrew Bible conceptualized deity and divine agency. So my research focuses on what people believe and cognitive explanations for why they believe that. Like who, what makes you think that in, in, in Egypt mythology, there weren't just tons of different branches to this? So there are multiple interpretations and translations to this day too. So the point is that Horus is connected to the sun. Horus was only indirectly connected with the sun. And as we're going to see in your video, none of the claims that you make about connections that would mean anything to the development of the Jesus tradition are actually there. Yes, obviously Horus didn't have the Gregorian calendar of December 25th. Horus is associated with the winter solstice. I'm talking about this astrological event, okay? But December 25th is not the date of the winter solstice. December 21st is usually the date of the winter solstice. Sometimes it's December 22nd. The Egyptians understood very well when the winter solstice was. And no, Horus is not connected with the winter solstice. Horus is depicted as the symbol of new beginnings and the birth or resurrection of the sun. So Horus is not depicted that way in ancient Egypt. And I want to point out the caption on that image above the creator's head there is totally inaccurate. It comes from a website called Isiopolis, which describes itself as a votive work in honor of the goddess Isis. 
that seal does not depict uh, Horus at all. It's just Isis with two attendants. There is the Karanak Temple. I hope I'm saying that right. The Sanctuary of Amon Ra, which was combined with Horus to align with the Winter Solstice. So that temple is located in the Amun-Ra precinct at Karnak. It is not associated with Horus. Ra Horakti is a different conflated deity. This is the conflation of Amun and Ra, and it does align with the winter solstice, but the real winter solstice on December 21st. It has no relationship whatsoever to December 25th. We also have a tomb in the necropolis of Quebec el Hawa, that aligns with the winter solstice. This was recently just found. They literally built temples around this shit. So what matters is there is a focus on this astronomical event with Horus involved. Yes, there are a number of tombs and temples in Egypt that are oriented toward the east, toward the rising sun, as well as toward the rising sun on the winter solstice. But the notion that these are directly connected with Horus is simply a fabrication. There's one story she just becomes magically pregnant from healing Osiris after he fought Seth. Also, there's another story where she's impregnated by a bolt of lightning when praying to the gods. Yes, there are stories that yada 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 over the intercourse, but there are none that indicate that intercourse was not involved. And that second example is an interpretation of a line from Coffin Text 148 that Faulkner published almost 50 years ago that has not been accepted by the broader scholarly community. Overwhelmingly, Isis was depicted in text and in image as having intercourse with Osiris. Uh, Isis is depicted as a virgin goddess, purity, and fertility. So two things here. The first is that virgin deities in the ancient world were more patron deities of virginity and virgins than they were conceptualized as actual virgins themselves. They are frequently depicted in text and in image as engaging in sexual intercourse themselves. As with Isis, as with uh, texts from Ugarit, other texts in Egypt, as with texts from Greece, as with texts from Rome. And the other thing is we don't need to gin up these theories in order to account for the development of the virgin birth story. We can already account for it by pointing to the Septuagint's rendering of the Hebrew Alma in Isaiah 7. 14 with the Greek word Parthenos, which more directly refers to virginity, and that gave Matthew a reason to uh, argue that Jesus was born of a virgin mother. So we can already account for it without having to engage in all this ancient mythological algebra. These are motifs. Um, the three kings, the three pharaohs are associated with Horus. So a couple of things here. Uh, to begin, just naming three kings that were associated with Horus does not mean that Horus was ever associated with the phrase or the concept of three kings. There were a number of kings that were associated with Horus. Additionally, three kings is a much later Christian development. The New Testament does not call the Magi kings and does not number them at all. So these were details that accreted to the tradition over the centuries. They're not in the New Testament. They were not a part of the original tradition of Jesus. Sirius li literally means the star of Isis. No, it absolutely does not. It comes from the Greek word Sirios, which means glowing or blazing. Also, Osiris is linked to the Orion's belt. They even built these little things to align with it. The notion that the pyramids at Giza were built to align with Orion's belt is a pseudo-archaeological theory that has been overwhelmingly rejected by the fields of both astronomy and Egyptology. Yeah, specifically, baptism didn't exist, but there was definitely ritual washing that was practiced by Egyptian priests to purify themselves by immersion in the Nile River. So two things. First, ritual washing in Egypt involved pouring water, uh, not immersion. It was the same as it was in early Judaism, and that brings up the second thing. The baptism is an elaboration on Judaism's mikvah, or ritual bath. So we already can account for the development of that practice. We don't have to gin up this misinformation about ancient Egypt to try to account for it. All religions are fabricated. Um, if the world ended now and rebuilt itself thousands of years later, there would be different religions. Congratulations on that very edgy insight. 